Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, today we're going to be looking at John chapter one through John chapter eight verses one through eleven. Um, and if you could just go ahead and turn there in your Bibles. Um, first, I have some announcements. Uh, first thing is that um, we we are starting Wednesday nights back up soon, so I encourage y'all to come to those. Uh, to come to that, um, I'm looking forward to seeing y'all. Um, the first first one back will be October seventh, um, and we will. And we'll be starting at six o'clock, um, so I encourage y'all to be there um, and bring friends. Um, also, uh, we, also we are starting back Sunday school soon too. Um, you know that we will be starting that back October fourth. So um, instead of being in the youth chapel like we would normally be, um, we're going to be in the old youth room upstairs. So. Um, I encourage y'all to be there. Um, if you have any questions on where the old youth room is, uh, come or ask questions. Ask me or one of the adult leaders, or come to the Sunday Night Discipleship uh, this Sunday at five. Um, we'll be looking over Hebrews chapter three, um, and ask 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 us then. We'll be happy to show you all where that is, um, so y'all can know exactly where Sunday school will be October fourth and where to go. Um, also, we are still doing we are we are doing Sunday morning services, so I encourage y'all to come to those. To um, and if you aren't comfortable yet with coming coming back to church, um, with going with going to Sunday morning services just yet, we are doing online services. Um, so y'all can stream it over your phone on YouTube. Um, and just tune in to see to see um, the message and or hear the message and to join us in worship. So um, today we're going to be looking at uh, John chapter eight verses one through eleven verses one through twelve. Uh, before we get into that, um, John chapter seven verse fifty three and John chapter eight verses one through eleven. Um, there's a lot of speculation about this passage and where it should be in the Bible and um, so but or if it's even true uh, but there is still some truth in it about about what we can do and about who Jesus is in and what we can do in our and how we can and some things and ways and how we can apply it to our lives. So, um, if you could read along with me, it says, "But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery, and when they had set set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery." In the very act, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This that this they said, testing him, and that that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, "He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And he and he again and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, "Woman, where where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you?" She said, "No." She has said, eh. She said, "No one, Lord." And Jesus said to her. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Have the light of life. And so, pray with me. Um, Lord, I thank you for this day, and thank you for your word, and thank you for just allowing us to be able to come together and and study it, and um, and even if it's over over computer, um, or over YouTube, Lord, I, 
I thank you for just allowing us to be able to have these means of still being able to teach your word and um, and read your word, Lord. Uh, I pray that you just uh, that that you just uh, help us understand your word and help us to apply it to our lives. And Lord, I pray that you just uh, um, please um, help those who um, help those who who are tuning in today to to understand what the word to understand your word and to so uh, Lord I pray that you just bless this time in Jesus name I pray Amen and, and so um, we see here that that the Pharisees they brought this woman who they caught in the act of adultery and if you look in Leviticus 20:10, we see that we see in the law that in the law in the law that um, that she is be that she is to be put to death, and along with along with the other party. So um, we see that they are to be put to death because of being of of that sin and and we see here that we only see the woman here and it kind of makes you wonder why the Pharisees and the scribes would only bring the woman instead of bringing the man and the woman who were in the act of committing adultery and and it says here that they said testing that they said all of this that they brought that woman before him and asked them, but what asked him? What what do you say about this matter? What do you say about us about killing her? About the about in the law of where it says that she is to die because she was committing this act. And it says in verse six, this they said, testing him that they might have something of of which to accuse him. And we see that they were trying to accuse him of this that they were trying to catch him in something that they were trying to get him to where he would say something wrong or do something wrong where they might have something against him where they might be able to to tell others that this man that you're listening to he's wrong but he but we look at what he did and but we can look at what he did here. It says he stooped down to the ground after he heard these things and wrote in the ground. And, you know, a lot of people, and they question, they wonder, like, why, what was that that Jesus wrote on the ground? What did Jesus write? And we see that one of the few thing, one of the few places where we see Jesus write something, or or write on the ground, or write on something that we don't know what it was, we don't know what it is, and it kind of just makes you wonder, like, what was that that Jesus was writing on the ground? And then, but you see, he gets up after they continue asking him this question of. What do you? What do we need to do? What do we do with this woman? And he says, "He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And then he stooped back down and he started writing on the ground again. And we see that it says in verse nine, "Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience." went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And we see that they knew that, they knew that they were with sin. They knew that they had sinned just like that woman had. Now, they might not have committed adultery, but they still sinned just like that woman. They are still sinners. And if you read and If you read uh, Romans 3.23, it says, 
for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And so we know that we have all sinned, and the only one who hasn't sinned is Jesus. And so we can know that, and and we see him saying these things to them, and it kind of just makes me wonder, like, and it makes me sit there and think, like, who are we to judge someone? Who are we to judge someone based on a sin that they commit? We we are no place to judge someone. We are no place to judge someone based on their sin or what they what they look like or what we think about them. And because if you look in if you look later on in chapter eight and verses thirteen through eighteen, it says. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself, your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. And yet if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that that the testimony of two men is true. I am, I am the, I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent, who sent me, bears witness of me. And we see that. We see right there that we're that the Pharisees. He's talking about the Pharisees and and saying that you judge according to the flesh. And how do we judge someone? How do we judge someone if we're just going to judge them based on if we're going to judge them by according to the flesh? If we're going to judge them even though we're imperfect, we we don't deserve to have we don't deserve to have life. Just as this woman was sinning, and just as all those Pharisees who who walked away and who knew that they were in the wrong. They were sinning. They're, they are sinners just like you and me. See, we're all sinners. And how can I sit here and judge someone, judge someone on a sin and then walk away from that and con- and attempt to condemn them for, for that sin and walk away from that and commit a sin myself? You see, I'm... I'm a sinner just as much as anybody. We're all sinners. And but it's because of Jesus that we're that we are able to be forgiven of our sins. That we are able to 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 have life. And you look further um, and you can read in uh here it says in verse 10 when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, "Woman, where are those who who where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you?" She said, "No one, Lord." And Jesus said to her, "Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more." And we see that Jesus, he's the one that can that is able to judge to judge her because his judgment is is true as it says as it says later on in chapter 8 where it says my judgment is true because for I am not alone but I am with the father who sent me and we see that he do, that Jesus he doesn't condemn her he doesn't he doesn't condemn her for that sin that she was brought up because He felt compassion for her. You see, he felt love for her, that he wouldn't condemn her to death right then. And he wouldn't throw a stone, even though he, out of everyone there, he could have. Because he was without sin. He could have thrown that stone, but yet he chose not to. And he could have sat there and and killed her, but he chose not to. And 
we see it says that and we see his love and it's because of him that we are able to and we need to we don't need to be other people's judge we are no place to judge someone and we can't sit there and look at someone and look at what they're doing and say that that person that oh look at what they're doing I can't walk up to them and share Jesus because they don't deserve Jesus I'm not I don't make that decision I I don't I'm not the person I'm I'm in no place to judge someone based on what they've done because I don't deserve to have I don't deserve the love of Christ I don't deserve his grace I don't deserve his mercy but yet he still gives that to me and we don't need to sit there and act like this person's so wrong for this and they deserve death when we need to point them in the right direction not condemning them but pointing them to Christ pointing them to his love and pointing them to his mercy and, and showing them Christ so that they can go and sin no more and so we need to share Christ's love not not condemn someone and we need to know that it's because of Christ's love that we are it's because of his love that we are able to have to live and so we don't need to condemn someone for their sins and all of this but we need to look at them and say go and sin no more and help them point them to verses in the Bible and teach the word to them and point them to Jesus and point them to his love and correct them if if you remember in when I or if you look in second Timothy it talks I think it's um I think it's second Timothy chapter two it says that scripture is good for correction and and we need to we need to know that that we need to point them to verses that we need to point them to verses so that they can correct what they're doing not to not to condemn them and say you deserve this you deserve that when we deserve the same thing but yet Christ he's his love and we have his love and his mercy and he's he's given that to us and he's shown that to us he's shown us grace and we need to know that it's because of him that we have this life and we don't and we need to point others to him not condemning them on at first sight or sitting by and thinking I don't need to share Christ with them because of look at their lifestyle I mean I they don't deserve Jesus when in a reality they do or they don't they don't deserve they don't deserve life they deserve death we all deserve death but it's because of Jesus his love he shows us that mercy he shows us that grace and he gives us something that we don't deserve so and we need to when we leave when we receive Christ we need to walk in his light it says in verse 12 then Jesus spoke to them again saying I am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life and we see there that when we come to know Christ that and when we that we need to follow him we need to seek him and we need to we need to not continue to walk in darkness not to continue to walk in sin but to walk in light to follow him to 
be followers of Christ, to be little Jesuses, and to share his love with others, to preach his word, to go and make disciples of all nations, not not the ones that we pick and choose, but all. It says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whoever, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And you see, it's offered to everyone. This gift of, this gift of God that he's graciously offered to us, it's, he offers it to everyone not just to America or to not just to Israel but the whole world he offers it to all of us and we need to point others to him to his love and we need to walk in light not in darkness we need to be a light to the world not not casting shadows or creating darkness wherever we go or creating sin but or but show but leading others to God leading others to Christ and being a light to others so if you guys uh, would pray with me Lord thank you for this day and thank you for your word uh, Lord I pray that you just help us apply it to our lives that we would not look at someone and condemn them um, but Lord that we wouldn't that we would share your love and that we would that we would show them who, who you are and and preach your word to them and preach truth to and preach truth and Lord I pray that you just help us to help us walk in light to not walk in sin, but to but to be follower, but to be little Christ, to be followers of you. Lord, I pray that you just, that you just help us uh, throughout this week, and um, Lord, I pray that you help us to take your word and preach it, preach it to others, and share your love with others. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.